Ko te aha, no te whare puka puka arohe o waha. No mai haramai ki te whare puka puka o Kemoreti. Hello, I'm Dee from Waipa District Libraries and welcome to our Cambridge Library. We're here to help celebrate the New Zealand Book Awards for children and young adults. And we're thrilled to have been awarded a Books Alive event for this book, Te Hipo Huna. Na Juliet McIver, Roa Ko, Sarah Davis, Na Karena Kelly, Ifakamori. It's published by Gecko Press and it's a finalist in the Wright Family Foundation Te Kura Ponamu Award for Te Reo Māori. No mai haramai ki te hipo huna. Starring Heidi as Don, Christine as Ms. Whiskersniff, and the Tamariki Okemoriti. It's written in Māori by Karina Kelly and retold in English by Dee Atkinson. The children in Ms. Whiskersniff's class are really excited. They're off to see Don Safari. Don's the gamekeeper, and he claims to have every animal in the land. Kei tēnei pāka mā tātoa ngā kararehe pai katoa, ko tukuna kia māewa. Hey, mataki makuto na. One young man pipes up saying, It's a lie. He's pointing to the sign saying, There's no hippopotamus up there. <laughs> Don claims that he has. Ngari tonu, me fai mai, kei konei ia no hoai. However, Don finds that at the lakeside, he hasn't. The hippopotamus has gone. Ai, kwa ngaro, wai ya. It doesn't worry the children, and they set off to find him. Me rapu ne, ki wi, ki wā. Mama e pā ka pai noa ka kitea kaore e roa. The children tell Mrs. Whiskersniff that they're the best hippopotamus hunters in town. They're sure to find him. Me uau wa ne e whai te hippo hippo ngaro ai. Mei kore mātou ko aku hoa, ngā aru aru hippo toa. Then one of the children sees him, or thinks he sees him. Arare, te roa marika, māku e tiki e hika. The child claims to have the hippopotamus. E whai, kua mau, e whai, kua mau, i mohi o katae o. That's not a hippopotamus, the rest of them cry. It's a giraffe. Kua tēnā kai kia. The quietly spoken Liam thinks he sees him. The other children are still intent on finding the hippopotamus. No one's taking much notice of Liam, and the rest of the children are intent on finding the hippopotamus. One of the other children thinks they see him. E fai kwa mau, e fai kwa mau, i mohi o katae au. Oh. 
the child claims to have what they think is a hippopotamus. That's not a hippopotamus, the other children cry. It's a warthog. The quietly spoken lamb is in the background, saying he sees the hippopotamus, but no one's really taking any notice. The rest of the children are still hunting high and low. One of the little girls says she'll chase him with her pointy stick. That animal turns out to be a python. That's not a hippopotamus, the children cry. Liam is still trying to get the teacher's attention. And with more gusto, the other children are still out searching. They then see a stripy tail. But it's a skunk. <laughs> That's not a hippopotamus, the children cry. Liam still thinks he sees the hippo, but still no one's tagging any note. Leela spotted a fin and dives into the tank, but has she found the hippopotamus? It turns out to be a manatee. The children are forlorn and sad that they haven't turned out to be the hippo hunters they claim to be. But Liam is still trying to get Ms. Whiskersniff's attention. He's sure he sees the hippo. Ms. Whiskersniff gives in. Has Liam turned out to be the best hippo hunter ever? The children are over the moon, so that's a hippopotamus. And that's the end of the story. Now to see what the experts think. So joining me is the author of Te Hippo Huna, Juliet McIver. Kia ora, Juliet. Thanks for joining me. Kia ora. Now I'm going to ask you about your thoughts on the play, but before I do that, firstly, congratulations on being a finalist in the New Zealand Book Awards for Children and Young Adults. Thank you. How did that make you feel? Uh, well, I mean, obviously I was delighted, but um, I really I really feel like this award is for Karina Kelly, who's the amazing translator since the book's shortlisted in the Te Pōnamu Award for Te Reo Māori. 
um, books. Yeah, so I'm I'm really thrilled for her because I think she absolutely deserves it. Fantastic. So mm -hmm. the original publication that you wrote, um, mm -hmm. that's not a hippopotamus, written in English, that was published in 2016. So what gave you the inspiration for that, for the story in the first place? Um, so for me, a lot of stories come from wordplay because I absolutely love words. So for that one, I was I really, I wanted to write a book with a lot of words in it that rhymed with hippopotamus. That was really the main driver. <laughs> so I thought that would be an interesting challenge. And I really love this really long word and, and the animal itself, I find quite intriguing and inspiring. So those things kind of drew, drew me to the idea. Um, and it was through brainstorms with words that rhyme with hippopotamus, which... <laughs> I can't um, imagine there are many. <laughs> yeah, well, you have to, as I sometimes explain to children in schools, you have to find the stress part of the word and then make a rhyme with that. So if you rhyme something with potter, which is the middle of hippopotamus and is the stress part, then um, you only need to add miss on the end to create a rhyme. So potter miss rhymes with hippopotamus um, and then trotter miss. Yes. And so then you can put it into a sentence like the trail is getting hotter miss. And so obviously... Once I um, figured out how to make things rhyme with hippopotamus, I knew I needed the word miss in the story, and that's why there's a teacher in the story. So it's all kind of driven from the words rather wow. than from, from ideas, in, initially at least. And so there was a teacher, and so there were students. And when I came up with the title, which has an internal rhyme, that's not a hippopotamus, um, it became clear that I needed some, some kind of story structure in which kids are mistakenly pulling out the wrong animal capturing the wrong animal when they're looking for a hippopotamus so that's why they're at a safari and that's why they keep pulling out the wrong animal and then everyone can chant that um that chorus which which I really like just the rhythm of it yeah yeah, yeah so oh, I guess wow. it all kind of came from there <laughs> it's so amazing to hear that explanation because it is actually completely over the top of my head and I completely missed that I have to say Oh, I don't think it's evident really that it all derived from that wordplay. <laughs> yeah. Now, Sarah Davis, she's an illustrator and extremely talented, of course. Did you work together on the visions for the illustration or did you give her some license to just come up with what she thought the animals would look like? And, and um, in particular, the hippopotamus? Yeah, there's really... Um, Traditionally, the, the author doesn't have any control over what the illustrator does. And it, it's it's really a good system because you, as the author, you create the story and you have certain, well, I certainly visualize what it's going to look like, but I've realized that my um, visuals are going to be very different from the final illustrations in every case. And so you quickly have to let go of that and release the project to somebody else to bring all of their own creative ideas and input and they Illustrators bring so much to a picture book, as I think is clear to anyone reading picture books, but some illustrators like Sarah Davis layer in a lot of other elements into the story and, and bring in a lot of different characters and movement and humour and uh, she brings so much to it that it's very easy to trust her with something, um, which, is, which is your role as the author anyway, to hand it over. But with her, it's particularly easy because she's so brilliant. <laughs> so, just, yeah, I didn't really have any input, <laughs> is what so, I'm saying. <laughs> so you just there, take, there that back, take that back and embrace it as is? Yeah, yeah. There is a point at which when the illustrator has done the roughs that you get to give some feedback. But most of the feedback that you give has to be related to the storytelling so um, or, or whatever you think will work better visually. And it's the same with when you initially write the story. If you put any directives in, it has to be because that's, I would say, if I want something to be, some part of the story to be carried in the visuals, then I can put that in as a note. But otherwise, you can't dictate how things should look. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the translation into Māori, how did that come about? And how did you come to work with Karina? Um, so Karina got in touch with me because she had, at the time, I think her little boy was four, and obviously she speaks Te Reo fluently, and she said, um, I want this book in Te Reo Māori <laughs> for my little boy. <laughs> but also, Karen is, um, you know, she has visions of what books are 
really good for the Māori speaking community and she really wanted this one to be available to everyone in te reo and so she had already translated it from rhyming English into rhyming Māori which is like kind of an impossible feat and so she got in touch and said can I run this by you and can we meet up and so we met up in a cafe because I was delighted that somebody had translated it into te reo I was amazed to hear that it was in rhyme Um, And we spent about two hours just going over all the nuances of it together, which was tremendous fun. Um, But I think her skill is just phenomenal. I'm just really impressed that she's able to do that. Wow, that's incredible. And some of the words, or in particular the animal names, didn't really translate. There were some issues with some of them, weren't there? Yeah, I I only vaguely remember that. I'm thinking, I guess, like, there would be some animal names that would obviously there's a lot of animal names that you wouldn't traditionally have in te reo maori but you don't Mm. traditionally have them in english either because we didn't have you know most of them come from african languages because they're african animals or from asian various asian languages that you end up transliterating into english at some point in history and i guess it's the same that they just get transliterated into te reo maori or, or else people come up with creative ideas that um that kind of evoke that animal somehow in, in te reo Māori. But I think um, in terms of the translation, the ability to, to work out the essence of a, a rhyming verse and then find the, a matching kind of rhythm and rhyme and nuance of meaning in another language, I think that's really where the tremendous skill comes in. Absolutely, yeah. mm. absolutely. So um, when we got the opportunity to submit um, an event for Books Alive, I, of course, mm. waited with bated breath to see who some of the finalists were going to be. And I was absolutely thrilled to see your book because immediately I had a vision in my mind. Um, maybe I'm a bit like the illustrator, you hand over the words and someone else does something with it. Now, mm. I could picture a play in my mind You've now seen it, Mm -hmm. Um, and it's also obviously been aired before we're we're coming to air here. Um, Let us know what you thought. (laughs) So um, is the play like um, a play in film format, or are you going to turn it into a stage play as well, or is that... that... (laughs) Yeah, no, we're we're keeping it small. You're keeping it um, as the film... where to workshop comes yeah. comes by and wants us to make it into a play. I'm um, a big production. I'm sure between us we could maybe sort that. The price is right. <laughs> oh, it was just so cute. The kids were so cute. It was delightful. Yeah, and it was great that you used Karina's um, recording of the Te Reo Māori version because obviously she is brilliant at reading as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so that gave it that like authenticity. And yes. um, and I li- I liked the way you superimposed pictures from the book. I think that worked really well. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I um, yeah, we couldn't get a hippopotamus. Um, we put the word out, but we couldn't get a hippopotamus. We managed to get a few of the other um, animals, as you will have seen. Um, right, which yeah. was, it's amazing, you know. And I, as much as we don't like the power of Facebook, or lots of us don't like social media, the power of Facebook can be completely amazing when you're either looking for things that you might not think are out there but Mm. um one particular lady answered the call with all these very large stuffed animals that were her daughters or are her daughters and her daughter is now in her teenage late teenage years oh wow um and yeah just just incredible and and even on the morning of filming in actual fact um we were fogged in we had some families not come we put the word out on social media and we had some other children answer the call so I oh, really wow. have to commend our community here in the Y path for uh, mm. lending us a hand <laughs> yeah 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 that's so cool <laughs> so yeah. look, being a finalist for the New Zealand Book Awards what does that do or what has that already done for Te Hipahuna? Oh, I guess it's um, increased visibility is probably the biggest thing, really. Yeah, uh, which is fantastic. Um, 
Yeah, so it's a really big promotional thing, isn't it, to have your book shortlisted? So, yeah, so that's fantastic for the book. Yeah. Yeah. And what does it do for the English version as well? I don't really know. <laughs> I'm hoping it helps. <laughs> I imagine it would do because, you know, as soon as it came out, I was fishing for the, you know, the English version as well. Oh, just, cool. you know, yeah. because I can't speak te reo um, or read te reo either. Um, so, yeah, I think there'll be other people doing the same. And, and I'm actually hoping that through our play, we'll be able to get people to understand the nuances of, of both, you know, um, what they can see and what they can hear. Mm, yeah. I've certainly learned a little bit of today of having to, you know, go go through the scenes for the children. So um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's yeah, a really, as you say, cool. it's a really great opportunity as well for even, you know, children to learn. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think you, you did a good job of the, um, interspersing the te reo with the um, English so that it was kind of accessible to people who don't yet speak te reo Māori. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, look, um, congratulations again on yeah, the book. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, look, we certainly wish you all the very best for the awards night. Yeah, I hope Karina wins. I think she deserves it. I think she's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks yeah. for joining us, Juliet. Yeah. Thank you. Ka kite. Ka kite anō.